Man, the Obama presidency hasn't really worked out the way I hoped it would work out, man. The last three months have been cool, though, because he stopped giving a shit, you know, so it's great. It's like office space now. It's like the Republican Party's the fax machine he's kicking the shit out of. You know? But the first seven years, though, man, I've been disappointed, man. He's deported more people than any other president. Guantanamo's still open. This is a president that's okay with the NSA spying on us, right? This is a president that's okay with the government spying on us. And if he's okay with the government spying on us, I'm sure he's okay with the government spying on his daughters, right? Think about this. He's a middle-aged man with two teenage daughters in the White House with access to the most sophisticated intelligence gathering in the world. You're telling me he's not using that? <laughs> I'm sure this conversation has happened before. <laughs> Daddy, my boyfriend died again. I don't know why this keeps happening, honey. It's strange how this keeps happening. Some of you groan, really? <laughs> you know, he's killed real people in the real world, right? You do know that, right? But what about the fictional boyfriend, sorry? Who speaks for the fictional boyfriend? <laughs> Some of you might be thinking, hurry Kundabolu, if you're so critical of this president, then why did you accept an invitation to meet Vice President Joe Biden in his house in Washington, D.C. last year? I'll tell you why I accepted that invitation. I am a hypocrite. <laughs> but I'm self-aware, so that makes everything okay. That's how liberalism works. I got invited to the vice president's house as part of an Asian American Pacific Islander event. People kept saying stuff like, you just got invited to meet the vice president because you're Indian. This is just because you're Indian. No, it's not because I'm Indian. It's because I'm dope. <laughs> if it's because I'm Indian, you're comparing me to people like my mother and my father and my brother, and I'm better than they are. <laughs> Went to the vice president's house with a bunch of other people. The vice president was there behind a podium which is weird to have a podium in your living room. <laughs> and he had a speech in front of him that his aides had prepared for him, but it's Joe Biden, so he ignored the speech completely, which is never a good idea when you're Joe Biden. And for some reason, he kept referring to everyone in the room as Asian Pacific people. What the fuck does that, do you think we have fins or something? Like, what does that mean? You Asian Pacific people have contributed a great deal to our society. People like Poseidon, Little Mermaid, <laughs> Submariner, of course. The Asian Pacific region has a great deal of strategic value to our country. Why are you telling us this? You invite us to your home, you tell us we have value to you and you're gonna use us now? Why would you say that? But of course, we didn't say anything to him, you know, because we just wanted a picture with him. That was the whole point of this trip. We just wanted Facebook and Instagram likes. That was all this was about, right? Social capital. So we all line up to take a picture with him. I'm up next, and the vice president looks at me, and he says, wow, if I had hair like yours, I'd be president right now. Psst, no, you wouldn't. Your hair is the least of your problems, Joe Biden. Also, you'd look ridiculous with my hair. I look ridiculous with my hair. But I didn't say anything to him, you know, because I didn't want to get droned, right? So... So I take a picture with the vice president. I start walking away, but it's me, so I have to milk every moment, right? So I turn back to the vice president, and I'm like, Mr. Vice President, I'm gonna be on Conan next week telling jokes. I'm a stand-up comedian. Like, he gives a shit, right? <laughs> then all of a sudden, Joe Biden's like, really? Well, I'm a big fan of yours, which is a blatant lie, because he just met me. <laughs> but then I started thinking about it. Hold on a second. Maybe he is a big fan of mine. And the whole time he's been really nervous to meet me, right? But he can't say anything because he's the vice president, right? So he can't be a fanboy, you know? He, he can't be like, oh my God, it's Harry Kundabolu, Secret Service, hold me. No, he has to maintain some dignity. So he slips it in on the side so I know, and I think to myself, finally, an honest politician, right? Somebody with taste, right? So Joe Biden's my favorite politician now, right? I've been reading up on Joey B as much as I can. And there was an article a few months ago in the New Yorker talking about how funny Joey is. And you know, Joey's hilarious, man. That guy's a laugh riot, man. And here's my favorite sentence. After so many years, he has an arsenal of opening lines that he can deploy in Baghdad, Beijing, or Wilmington. One of his favorites, if I had hair like yours, I 
I thought you were my friend, though. What kind of maniac repeats the same jokes to different people over and over again and <laughs> pretends they're new every time? Who I tell you? I have no issues with Joe Biden. He's just our weird uncle we all get to make fun of, right? He's just, just an old maniac, right? Of course, uh, I hate Donald Trump, right? Lex Luthor himself, right? <laughs> A lot of uh, comics uh, who make fun of Donald Trump, make fun of his hair. That's low hanging fruit, man. I'm not gonna do that. I think I'm more clever than that. I'm not gonna make fun of his hair. You know? His hair looks like it was drawn by a child <laughs> while sneezing. <laughs> Felt good. <laughs> Donald Trump says things like, the blacks, the women, and the gays love me. I never knew the word the could sound so racist, sexist, and homophobic. <laughs> the only thing Donald Trump has done to liberate women is divorce them. 